Hello. So in part one, um, we we kind of talked about resting potential. We said there's this difference in charge across the membrane. Basically, we have these charged particles called ions. Um, there's more sodium on the outside of the cell. There's more potassium on the inside of the cell. There's negatively charged proteins, not shown on the diagram, but that are inside that cell. And since there's different concentrations of these charged particles, if you basically add up all the positives and all the negatives on each side of the membrane, you find that they're not equal. And there's actually more negative charge inside the cell than outside. And that difference in charge is has a value that we can calculate of minus 70 millivolts. And at rest, your neurons have this resting potential at minus 70. So you can think of this like a ball held in the air. It's like this potential energy that we can tap into to make something happen. Well, in this part, we're going to do that. We're going to we're going to tap into this situation to make something happen. And that something is called an action potential. So um, again, just like before, this gets kind of complicated. So hang in there with me and hopefully it all comes together. Um, I want to start with what I call players process. I'm going to introduce you to some some molecules involved in the process and then I'm going to talk about what they do. So two players I want to start with sodium ion channels and potassium ion channels. Both of these are what we call gated membrane proteins. In other words, there's a little gate, a door, so to speak, on these proteins. And normally these doors are closed, but we can kind of prompt them to open up to allow the particular ion to pass through. So gated means just like a gate, like a gate on a fence. So sodium ion channels are gated membrane proteins, and they allow sodium to cross the membrane, and they open quickly in response to depolarization. Depolarization, by the way, simply means that it gets slightly more positive. So if this value, minus 70, goes up, we say that is depolarized. So when sodium ion channels are depolarized, they open up and sodium can rush through. Potassium ion channels, on the other hand, are gated membrane proteins that allow potassium to cross the membrane, and they open slowly in response to depolarization. Now think back to biology last year, and if you've got a lot of sodium outside the cell and not much inside, if we open those uh, sodium ion channels, which way is sodium gonna go? And hopefully you remember that it's gonna go into the cell because things go from a high concentration to a low concentration. Likewise, when the potassium ion channels open, the potassium is going to go from a high concentration inside the cell to a low concentration outside the cell. So let's go back to our diagram and kind of play that out and see how this all works. Okay, so now we're going to add the sodium ion channels and potassium ion channels to our drawing. So our sodium ion channels, I'm going to use red again, and they're going to be drawn sort of like that. And you see I have kind of a rounded end here so that these round sodium ions can fit inside and kind of pass through. So these are going to be my sodium ion channels. And then I'm going to have blue ones with a more triangular opening for our triangular potassium ions. These are going to be our potassium ion channels. And these ion channels, they're kind of scattered throughout the, they're embedded within the membrane all along the neuron. So, you know, our little diagram, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be kind of these little red and blue blobs down here. And of course, we can't see those very well. So if we go up here, this is what it's going to look like. There's these little proteins embedded in the membrane. Here's our sodium ion channels. And these are our potassium ion channels. And these, under the right conditions, are going to allow these sodium ions and potassium ions to actually cross the membrane. But we'll be back in a moment to discuss how that works. Okay, now that we uh, have that figured out, there's one more player I want to point out, the sodium and potassium pump. This is another membrane protein. Its job is basically just to put everything back where it started. So it uses energy in this case. It's going to move the sodium and potassium ions against their gradient, so back where they came from, to reestablish that resting potential. So you can see sodium ions bind to this uh, pump, 
Um, ATP is used to move them across the membrane and then potassium ions bind and, um, and then they're moved the other way. So after an action potential is fired, this protein is responsible for kind of moving the sodium back outside the cell and the, uh, sorry, did I say the sodium back outside the cell and the potassium back inside the cell, putting everything back where it started. So let's put it all together. Here is the process in case it's not clear yet. So step one, depolarization causes the ion channels to open. So at rest, um, that little menu bar thing keeps popping up. Um, at rest, we're at minus 70. And for reasons we'll talk about later, that cell can be depolarized, meaning there's a little increase, a little bloop, as that value gets more positive. This causes the ion channels to open. Now, think back to what I said about the sodium and potassium ion channels. Which one is going to open first, sodium or potassium? And if you look back at those definitions, you'll see that we point out that the sodium ion channels open quickly and the potassium ion channels open slowly. So let's play that out and see what happens. Okay, so normally our cells are chillaxing at minus 70, but Sometimes the cell becomes depolarized, and you're probably wondering, well, when does that happen? Why does that happen? We're going to loop back and talk about that later. Basically, it's getting a signal from a neighboring cell. So if this gets a signal from the neighboring cell, then we say it becomes depolarized, which means it's less polar. Think polar opposites. There's a north pole, south pole on the opposite ends of the earth. So this particular cell is polarized because here's a zero charge, here's a minus 70. We call that a polarity there. Um, depolarizing it means this is going to get a little bit closer to zero. So if this is depolarized, then what happens is these ion channels open up those little gates we talked about. <clears throat> this positive charge makes the gates open, but the sodium ion channel gates open more quickly than the potassium ion channel gates. And so what happens is after depolarization, the sodium ion channels open their gates. Once the gates are open, sodium ions can pass through. And since there's more on the outside of the cell than inside, the sodium tends to rush into the cell. I'll even draw that in. Um, <clears throat> since we're now introducing more positive charges to the inside of the cell, that makes this value shoot way up. So this region of the graph means sodium ions are rushing in. I'll write that down. So this is sodium rushing in. This, by the way, is depolarization. And then what happens is um, the potassium ion channels, those gates open too. They're a little bit slower though. So by the time the sodium's rushed in, those pokey so, uh, potassium ion channels are finally getting around to opening up. And when they do, these potassium ions are going to go out of the cell because, again, they go from high concentration to low concentration. So now we're losing positive charges as they exit. And so our, our charge comes back down. And so this region of the graph means the potassium rushes out. And so now we're kind of back down to normal, except all our sodium ions are inside the cell, all our potassium ions are on the outside. So we got to put that back. And that's where the sodium potassium pump comes in. That protein uses energy to pump those sodium ions back out to where they started and the potassium back in to where they started. And then that brings this back to where we started at minus 70. And so this process is called an action potential. And we can represent it right here. That is what we've accomplished with all of that effort. So to summarize, the sodium ion channels are open quickly, so sodium is going to rush into the cell. And we see whew, as all those positive charges rush in, it's going to bring us up to a very high value. The potassium ion channels are going to open a little bit more slowly. Uh, and but when they do, then the potassium ions are going to come out. And since we're losing positive charges now as the potassium ions exit, it brings us back down. But now we have to bring things back to where we started. That is where the sodium potassium pump kicks in. It is going to use energy to put the sodium back outside the cell and the potassium back inside the cell so that we can do this all over again. So this is 
an action potential. Now, at this point, you may be thinking, oh, yeah. At this point, you may be thinking, what is the point of that? Like, that was a lot of work and a lot of complexity. And all we did was we let sodium rush in, woo, and potassium rush out, woo. What's the point of that? Well, here's the point. Depolarization in one part of the neuron will cause ion channels in the neighboring part of the neuron to open up. And that will cause an action potential there. That action potential then triggers um, ion channels in the next part of the neuron to open, causing an action potential there. So it's a bit like the wave. If you've ever been to a sporting event and people are doing the wave, hey, and you know, like you kind of go in a row, one person does the wave, then the next person, then the next person. That's how these action potentials work. An action potential triggers another one, which triggers another one, which triggers another one. And that is what causes the signal to go all the way down to the end of the neuron. It is a series of action potentials. Each one is just sodium rushing in, potassium rushing out, like the wave, sodium rushing in, potassium rushing out. Um, individually, it doesn't really do much, but when one triggers the next, triggers the next, triggers the next, you are able to send a signal all the way to the end of that cell. I would encourage you to take a moment to go through and see how you're doing on this. If you're making, if this is making sense to you, here's a series of questions and um, take a moment and see if you can answer them and then uh, hit pause while you do that, because in just a moment, I'm going to go ahead and reveal the answers. So we ready? Answers. Here we come. Whoops. Thought I hadn't typed in, but I don't. I'll go through them verbally. Um, letter A, the process being shown is an action potential. B, most neurons have a resting potential of minus 70. What does that mean in terms of concentration of sodium, potassium, and negatively charged proteins? Well, there's more sodium outside the cell, there's more potassium inside the cell, and there's more negatively charged proteins inside the cell. And so there's a different concentration of these charged particles. And if you add up all the positives and all the negatives together, um, it turns out that the inside is minus 70 millivolts with respect to the outside. In other words, there's a difference in charge across that membrane. Region one of the graph, that is that depolarization. That's what causes the ion channels to open initially. And then remember, sodium ions open quickly. So then number two is gonna be them rushing through. Um, letter D, what region correlates to the exit of potassium? That's number three. When potassium goes from outside the cell to inside, uh, from inside the cell to outside the cell, it is going to, uh, the cell is going to be losing positives and that value is going to be rushing out. And then finally, how do sodium and potassium ions cross the membrane? Why don't they do it when we're not firing an action potential? Well, remember, these ions can only pass through um, the sodium ion channels or potassium ion channels. They can't pass through the membrane by themselves. So basically that depolarization causes little gates on those proteins to open. That allows sodium to rush in. It allows potassium to rush out. Okay. Um, I think I will pause there and we'll pick this up with our next one.